Hello everyone, my name is Salar and you are watching Smart Code. Let's now develop another interesting student project with JavaScript. And this project is about guess the number game. And I hope you know how to play this game. We let the computer to choose a random number between a specified range. For example, the range defined in our application is 1 to 15. And you as a player have to guess that number by making the guesses. Let's say my first guess is number 10. And now I will check if my guess is right or wrong by pressing the button. And if the guess is not right, application is going to tell you if it is lower or the higher. And you can use these hints to narrow down your guess until you find the right one. For example, the number 10 is lower. So next time I am going to guess 13. And so now my application says the guess is higher. That means the number is either 11 or 12. Right? Let's now try to guess the right number. Yeah, we guessed the number and it was 12, right? And you will notice one more thing here. As you guess the right number, the entire game panel disappears and play again button shows itself. And when you click on the play again, you get the game panel back on the screen. So hide the game panel and show the play again button is something new that we are going to try out in this project. And it can easily be implemented using the class list property. And I'm going to explain everything step by step and I hope you will love developing this application. Let's now get into it and start the development. Now in our code editor, we have as usual three files, one for HTML, one for CSS and one for JavaScript. And you can see I have already added the CSS and the JavaScript file to the HTML, right? Let's now start defining the structure of this application with the help of HTML. Let's first take a div container for the entire application and call it wrapper now inside the wrapper div i'm going to create another container and i will call it game panel now inside this game panel container we will put all the elements which we are going to hide when the game is over right so the first element is the title guess the number and the second element is the paragraph element to inform the user about the range of the numbers And so now we need a text box, so let's code it. And it needs an ID for the JavaScript. Let's call it user guess and put a class for the CSS. And the final element is the button for making the guess. So let's code it. And I think I need to put a class to the h1 and to the paragraph for the css and that would be the result in the browser now outside of the game panel we will put a paragraph for showing the result or the hints right so this paragraph has no text initially we're going to put the text based on the logics with the help of javascript right and the final element to the application is the play again button so let's code it right so now our application's content structure is ready and here we see the result in the browser so let's now put some css and style the application so in the css as usual our first selector will be the universal selector where we are going to set box sizing to border box and reset padding and margin and so now we are going to target the wrapper div by its class. And so here we are going to write a bunch of properties, appearance related and the layout related. So let's first write the properties related to the appearance. Set the width and the height and the background color. And so now I'm going to put the entire wrapper container to the center of the page. And so you see now width, height and background color is applied and our application is centered to the page, right? And so now we are going to use flex to the wrapper to center align elements inside it. So apply flex. Flex direction is column and align item center. Right, so we apply flex to the 
wrapper container and if you take a closer look to the wrapper container then you will see our wrapper has three first level children this div element this paragraph and this button right so the flex applies only to the first level children and that means flex is applied only to the game panel div and not to the elements inside the game panel right and in order to arrange these elements we are going to apply another flex to the game panel div with the same properties so in the css we are going to first target our game panel and we put the same flex properties and so now you see all the elements inside the container are rightly aligned right and so now we are going to target the elements one by one and style them separately let's just start with the title and style it and now i will target the info paragraph and we'll put some style properties Let's now target the text box which has a class user underscore guess and style it. Right, so the text box is styled. And so now we are going to style the guess button and the play again button. Let's target the guest button first and style it. And now the play again button. Okay, so here we have now our final application interface. And so now we are going to hide this play again button and it will show itself again when the game is over. So in the CSS, I will first create a class selector named hidden. And this one contains only one property, display none, right? And when this class is applied to an element, element disappears. And we are going to apply this hidden class to the play again button right so here i'm going to put hidden class that's it and so now you will see the play again button is gone right and now the things are ready for the javascript let's now program the javascript and finalize this application now in the javascript we need to set up some resources before we start defining the game logic so the first resource is a user defined function that gonna return the element by its id so let's code this function. The name of the function is just a dollar sign and it receives a parameter ID and returns the element by using the ID parameter. Right, so instead of coding document.getElement by ID again and again, we are gonna just call our dollar sign function. It is simple, elegant, and improves the code quality. Now, another resource that we need is the random numbers. So let's generate the random numbers in the range of 1 to 15. So now we have our resources ready. Let's now code the program logic. Now, take a look at our interface. Our guess button is the main button and everything goes behind this button. So we need to get this button in the JavaScript and we listen for the click event and finally code a function that executes the logic. So let's code this step. So we get the guess button by passing its ID to the dollar function. And so now we are gonna listen for the click events and finally, we are going to code a function for executing the JavaScript. Right, so in this function, we are going to code our entire application. And this function is called whenever a click is performed to the guess button. Right, now here, we are first going to get the user input from the text box.
right so now we have user guess into the user input variable and at the same time we need this paragraph in the javascript and it has an id hints that we are going to use to make this paragraph available to the javascript right so let's do that right so we now have the guess value and the hints paragraph available and it's not time to perform some validation because we are not going to allow the user to leave the text box empty or to enter something other than the numbers right so in our if statement we are gonna process the user input and if the user input is not a number we will come inside this if block and here we are going to notify the user about the problem right so this message is displayed to the user if the user input is not a number and right after this message we need to code a return statement return statement here is important in programming return statement has two different functions number one it returns a value from the function and an example you can find right here this return statement gonna return an element by its id right and number two it terminates the execution of the function and that's why we need this standalone return statement here that terminates the execution of this function so whenever the input provided by the user is not a number this message is displayed and the function execution is terminated right here and everything that we are going to have under this if statement never gonna be executed by the javascript right so the logic is simple notify the user and terminate the program right so now we have restricted the user to enter only the numbers but is none function is not going to control the empty text box and we don't want to allow the user to leave the text box empty and if the text box is left empty an empty string is passed to the program so we can expand our if statement using the logical or and can also check for the empty string and so now our validation is good text box can't be left empty and the provided data must be the numbers let's now check in the browser if this validation working or not so the text box is empty now press the guess button and here you see the error message now check for the values other than the numbers let's say some alphabets and here you see the notification again right so the validation is working fine Let's now code the final if statement and wrap up this application. right so before processing the program logic we will also see if the user input is provided in the right range or not and if it is not provided in the right range this message is displayed to the user and so here we are gonna program the rest of the application and if you are inside this if statement that means everything is fine right now the game logic is very simple and we would say if the user input is greater than random then we would say your guess is higher and if the user guess is smaller than random then we would say your guess is lower and the final statement is for the right guess and we will say if user input is equal to random
you will guess is light and now we are gonna reveal the number and so now we are gonna hide the game panel and show the play again button we are gonna first get the entire game panel using the query selector method right so now we have this game panel div in the javascript and in order to hide this game panel we need to assign this hidden class to it just like we did with the play again button right and we are going to do it with the help of class list property so in the javascript to the game panel we will call the class list property now this class list property is used to add remove or toggle classes and here we need to add a hidden class so we will call add method and add hidden class to the game panel that's it now at the same time we are going to remove the hidden class from the play again button so that it shows itself in the browser so let's get the play again button now call the class list to it and then call the remove method to remove the hidden class from the play again button so that's it our application is almost ready let's run it in the browser so let's play the game by making the guesses it's higher let's take five it's still higher three and three was the number and you see the game panel is gone and play again is on the screen right so let's now program the play again button and as you reload the application you get the startup position and reload simply means start again the application and when you start the application you have the game panel for example if i reload in the browser then you will see our game panel is back so the same reload function we are going to program behind the play again button right so let's now code the play again option And here we will say windows dot location dot reload. That's it. And so now our application guess the number game is ready, and you can now run it in the browser. And I'm sure it will work. And the source code for this application can also be downloaded from the link I put in the description. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to like this one and do leave the comments to let me know what you think about this one. I will see you around and thanks for watching.